Hello, and welcome to Credit Matters. I'm John Belladello, head of Standard & Poor's global corporate ratings business. I'm here today with David Gilmore, head of our recovery analytical team in Europe, and Bill Chu, head of our recovery uh, analytical team in the United States. We're going to be talking about our leverage credit analysis and our recovery analysis that goes along with it. Hello, Dave. Hello, Bill. David, let's start off. What is our outlook in 2012 for leverage credit? Well, the outlook for 2012 is quite benign. Uh, we're expecting a continuation of the comparatively low default rate we've seen over the last 12, 18 months, materially below the long-term 4.5% uh, average. However, it's worth noting that the storm clouds are gathering post-2012. So there's a number of factors which we're quite concerned about that might uh, make for a material increase in that default rate. Specifically, we're looking at the refinancing wall in Europe of about 100 to 150 billion of term debt that needs refinancing between 2013 and 2015. When we combine that with the uh, Basel III requirements and solvency requirements in Europe, we see the banks being less willing to refinance on such benign terms, if at all. Also, the slack that's been taken up by the institutional investors in Europe, in particular the CLOs over the past five years, that will not be there 2013 to 15 as they, as they hit their, at the end of their reinvestment periods. So they're not going to be able to um, provide the debt for that refinancing. So what we're going to be doing is we're looking at the, the high yield bond market to take up a huge amount of slack in 2013, sure. 2015. So the danger is it will not be able to expand to such a great level and that might have an impact on the default rates 2013 onwards. Right, and we've already seen the bond market kick in uh, this pa uh, the first half of this year. It Whether that continues going forward, that's what you're, you're pointing out. Absolutely. Just to be clear, you, the 130, 150 billion come and due over the next few years, that's just the the leverage credit market, yes, right, because it's it's a bigger number for all. Of course, and and to be fair, no one's quite got their handle on the size of that number, so this is our estimate of what it is. That's right, Bill. Turning to you, how does this differ in the United States? Well, in the U.S., I think we see a largely similar pattern. Our current uh, global fixed income research forecast is that we will continue to have a very low re uh, default rate into right. June of 2012. Uh, 2012 well below the, the average that we talked about. Um, I think we see similar uh, concerns that, that David mentioned, both the potential return of maturity as a risk that has really been taken off the table to a great extent by the liquid markets that we've seen, but right. clearly we see uh, a reversal in those markets. And in addition, I think a point that, uh, that we, it causes us concern and leads to caution is that the ratings mix remains very, very weak with the bulk of the rated portfolio heavily in the lowest two categories, 46% at the last uh, count you know, in, in single B and triple C, the weakest credits. Um, in addition, I guess the other thing that we're keeping our eye on is, is the potential for weak revenue growth to really become a challenge. The average growth across the rated portfolio in the, in the U.S. has been at best to mid to uh, slightly above mid single digits. Uh, in the many sectors, we think will still be challenged. Okay, so you make a, a couple of good points there. The last one, you know, what is our economy really going to be and how is that going to impact yeah. the, the revenue so performance? Okay. And you also made a point uh, uh, you know, about the uh, oncoming uh, maturities and it's something we really have to pay attention Ab to. Absolutely. Here we see the, the concentration of the maturity risk really starts in 2013 right. up to 16 and depending on how you can count it, it's up to a trillion what, what's dollars. What's actually interesting yeah. is earlier this year investors would come to us and say, what are you so worried about with these exactly. maturities? Now they're coming to us and say, oh, this is a real concern. So yeah, and, and it it picks up on a point that you and I have talked about that a lot of that liquidity we got to keep in mind was not just market generated the Fed presence was enormous in this okay. and that that that's a further issue I think okay so turning to your day jobs uh, <laughs> uh, you, you, vo you both manage our recovery analytics team so what is our our outlook for our recovery ratings and recoveries those being post default for 2012 and beyond okay David? certainly um, it's kind of bifurcated. Um, the outlook for the senior, true senior secured recoveries is very different to the outlook for the more subordinated uh, debt pieces. So for the senior secured, uh, they, we do expect, based upon the existing recovery ratings 
and also the very small number of empirical defaults we've got in Europe that we're sifting through the, the evidence from. Uh, our expectation is that the senior security recoveries will remain at, at the high levels of, of the historic norms both, uh, that we've seen both in Europe and the US. So that's quite reassuring, and I think that that's good news for a lot of the senior security debt holders. Right. What's perhaps more interesting is from our recovery ratings, when, when we analyze the second lien debt, the mezzanine debt, and uh, other more subordinate piece debt pieces, we're in general coming out with recoveries which in many cases are below 10%. In many cases, we're looking at very, very low recoveries. And the, the small amount of uh, anecdotal evidence we've got thus far over the past two years of defaults for those and recoveries for those, um, those that have actually happened kind of is indicating that that might be quite, quite reasonable. And so the key message, I suppose, from the European side of things is for the subordinated debt pieces, the long-term averages for mezzanine debt and, uh, well, second lien debt where there is some, we may be coming out much lower than that for this, this current cycle. Okay. Bill, how's that different? Uh, yeah, in the States? U.S., I think we see a similar pa pattern. Uh, you, uh, the current recoveries, the actual recoveries, are running fairly high, closing right. at the full, full year 2010. We, on a nominal basis, we're seeing the senior secured at, at 80 percent lower, as we would expect for senior unsecured and subordinated debt. When we look ahead, however, we're, we're a little bit different from what we see in Europe. Uh, based on the recovery ratings, we would expect uh, recoveries to be marginally lower. Uh, across each of the classes, less so in the, in the, uh, in the senior secured. The senior secured loans we still think will be, uh, last numbers uh, are averaging around 75% nominal uh, versus uh, a historical level of 85% in the right. overall portfolio. So marginally lower, simply reflecting the uh, additional leverage that's been put in right. over the, the last couple of years in particular. Okay, very good. Two interesting dynamics going on between uh, Europe and the United States. Indeed. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.